Join us today as we continue our study on Romans. We're in chapter 7, this is part 1, verses 1 through 8. Where we'll see that Paul uses an analogy to continue to talk about the law. Hey, welcome back to our channel, Christ Be Known. I'm Teddy Stewart. And I'm Ron Stewart. Here on this channel, we're going to be going through God's Word, unpacking the Scriptures, trying to gain a better understanding of what God's saying to us through His Holy Word. We're also looking to find a way to apply that understanding to our lives with just daily applications, things that can help us in our walk with God. Um, so these are just our thoughts as we went through our study of what the Holy Spirit was saying to us. Um, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, just a little bit about us. We're not experts in the Word of God, but we love to read the Word of God and to seek better understanding and to get to know Christ more. That's our goal here. Um, so, you know, we, we welcome your questions and comments um, as we go throughout the study. Just drop them in the uh, below and, and we'll go from there. Also, if you'd like to use the same study journal that we're using, it'll be linked in the description box below. All right. All right. Well, let's say a quick prayer and we'll get this show rolling. Okay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask for your presence here to be with us. We ask, Lord, for you to help us convey a message that you want us to convey. And Lord, this is all for your glory, Amen. not for us. This is for your glory. Use it for your will, Lord. We just pray that seeds will be planted, seeds will be watered, and that a harvest will be brought forth. And Lord, may, may your words help others and us continue to grow in our walk with you. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. All right. So once again, yes, welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us on this journey. Yeah. That's what our walk with Christ is. It's like, it's just, it's a lifelong journey. Um, so we are in Romans still, chapter 7. This is part one of chapter seven, verses one through eight. So we're going to go through it and we're going to see what Paul has to say about it, see what this analogy is. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm just going to start as I've been doing, going straight right. to the scriptures, and then we'll go from there. Hi, right, there's, there's worse things you could start with. Yeah, true, true story. All right. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law that the law has dominion over man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So, so then if, while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband died, dies, excuse me, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Taking notes. All right. Love it when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Real, you and real, me. Real, real time. You and me both. Real time. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law, for I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire, for apart from the law, sin was dead. So, what is this great analogy that Paul's talking about here? Is uh, 
in relation to the law. I mean, my uh, what I took from that was he's using the analogy of divorce. Yeah. Um, and then you know transcribing that over to us and which is a lot of the note that I was just taking as you were reading us and the the law and Christ and I say that and this chapter threw me for so many loops yeah um I'm just going to go ahead and throw out the note that the Holy Spirit spoke to me that I just wrote down while you were reading that because I think it'll sum up what I'm trying to say okay um we are the bride of bride of Christ. There you go. By his death, we are free to divorce sin and its hold through the law and able to marry Christ. That's exactly, yes, yes. That's exactly what I was fixing to say as well because, yes, we the church is known as the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, yes, just as a woman is free to marry another when her husband dies, mm -hmm. We are free from sin because we've died to sin by accepting Christ as our Savior, mm -hmm. by what He did and our acceptance of it, if you will. Right. And then, yes, we, we are free to marry Him now. Um, yes, that's you hit the analogy right on the head. That's exactly what the analogy is. And I think it does a pretty good job of describing it and explaining it. Yep. And it just continues to drive home that, you know, our, our flesh is... Our flesh is terrible. Um, I say that in, in terms of, I think as we read through more of this, it'll, you know, your flesh is, in last, you know, last week's video, is like our flesh is worldly. Yes. Self-seeking. Self-seeking, self-pleasure. Self -pleasure. You know, pleasure. Um, but it's, you know, it was funny in my, my um, New King James, the study Bible that I have, it had a footnote in it. Um, I don't remember which verse it was relaying. It was talking about. I think it was a late, a little bit later on in the chapter. But I'm going to say it now because it just, it still has stuck with me. Like this is what's been ringing over in my head all week since I started the study. And the the note that it had in there was, the only good thing in a believer is the Holy Spirit. True story. Which was just. <laughs> It's like, wow, okay, you know, here, you know, you get saved, you get baptized, you know, and you think, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm this good person now. And it's only because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you that yes. you're, that you're a good yes. person. Yes. Well, it's and, like, and it's, you know, you, you're, because you're still flesh. You're still flesh, yes. And Our so, righteousness is this filthy rags. Yeah. We you, think we're being good and God's like, I wouldn't even wipe my table with that. Your, your flesh still has the sinful desires. Yes. Yes. Regardless of what you've done, you know, um, changing your heart and your mind and your spirit, like your mm -hmm. flesh still has the desires. And and we're going to talk a lot about that as we finish this chapter. Yep. Um, so I, I don't want to get too far. No, I don't want to. No, that, but no. Yes, yes, that's. You, you, you're exactly right, though. The only thing mm -hmm. good in a Christian is the Holy Spirit. Yep. Because we are still. flesh we are still we still have a sinful nature mm -hmm. yeah and I, you know he reiterates that in, in six you know we've been delivered from the law having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit yep and not in the oldness of the letter and that, that's yeah we we are dead to sin sin's dead to us whatever mm -hmm. now this is all talking about justification we're still supposed to follow the law for God's glory because mm -hmm. we want to please God. We want to make God happy. Mm -hmm. You know, God saved us from eternal death. The least we could do is try to obey Him. You mm -hmm. know, obedience is huge. But that that's all that, that's all it is. It's you know, it's not talking about justification. You're, you, you know, as we've beaten this dead horse many times, you're not justified by your works. Yep. You can't be good enough to get in God's good graces. You cannot mm -hmm. be good enough for it to be reconciled with God. We can't do it. And I, you know, and when I was reading verse seven, it 
it just I don't know how I don't know how the you know how the Holy Spirit does this, but it just it hits me. We've talked about it in previous videos, and I mean, you know, humans have talked about it for eons and eons and eons of time, and we're going to talk about it in future videos, um, especially in the rest of this chapter. But it's here in seven, you know, where he's saying, "For I would have not known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet." Yeah. So it's, it, you know, it's what we've talked about before about, you know, focusing and what, you know, and some people look, you can, you can look at the laws, you know, the Ten Commandments and it's you shall not, you shall not, you shall not, you shall not. And everybody knows human nature is you tell me I can't do something and by all means that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to do it. Tell me I can't have something, I'm going to want it more. Tell and, me I can't do it, I'm going to do and it. And so it's just, you know, it's, I don't know, this was what, 2,000 years ago, roughly? We're not alone, people. We ain't changed a bit. We haven't changed. Still fighting with the same things that they were fighting with then. Mm -hmm. um, the only humans are still humans. The so. only difference is we have this book. Yes. They did not have that book 2,000 years ago. No. Yes. So I just, it's just, it's interesting to me how, you know, as I'm reading and diving into the, the to the book more, it see these things and it's like, oh, well, there's a light bulb. Yeah. 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 This ain't nothing new. I should have read this book 40 years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> Might have made the last 40 years a little bit, maybe a little bit smoother. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I just... And I should say, yeah, they had part of this book, I guess. Well, they had, you know, but they didn't have the whole thing. Yep. Um, and, you know, we will touch on this more in, in part two. <clears throat> but at first, it, you know, this was kind of confusing to me. And I, I struggled with, like I told you earlier, verses 9 through 11 more, uh -huh. uh, which is the next video. So I'm not going to get into that now. But, you know, when he says, but sin taking opportunity by the commandment. Okay, now wait a uh -huh. minute. The commandment's supposed to be good. Uh-huh. Uh, see, we are. Yeah. I, you know, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to get too deep into it because I'm going to really delve into this in the next video because it, it expands even well, more. Well, I'm, I'm going to throw you a little teaser then for this conversation and then leading into the next video. And all I'm going to say is double-edged sword. Okay. In relation to the okay. law. Okay, okay. Okay. And then he says, you know, it pr produced in me all manner of evil desire. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But yet the law is holy. The law is holy and good. So, yeah, I, I don't... In which we have to believe that because the the law came from God. Yes. And everything about God is holy and good. So why would the law be any different? Right, but they, you, well, you're exactly right, but that's the part that confused me. Uh huh. Well, then how is sin using the law to, mm -hmm. you know, to bring evil desires in me? Oh, Gosh, I, part two is going to be good. I, yeah, I wish I hadn't have jumped off into that rabbit hole because now I'm having a hard time holding my tongue back. Yep. Uh, well, so I just want to dive right into it. But uh, we've made it through eight. Let's wrap this puppy up. And yeah. So here, Paul's using the analogy of Christ, us being the bride of Christ. How now that we're dead to sin, we can marry Christ and we can have a relationship with Christ, just like a woman can be freed from the law if her husband dies to go ahead and marry another one yep. uh, and not be an adulteress. Yep. Um, so that's, I guess you said that that's fantastic news. Um, but it was just, I don't know, I guess it was a really good analogy for him to explain it that way because it kind of puts it in perspective. It, um, it was, yeah, it really it is. Ma I it mean, makes, it makes you, sense. You know, I mean, you, we all do really well with analogies. Everybody, you know, you try to try to link things together. Yeah. Um, and I think it, that, it, and it, I think it, that's a word picture. That's probably a very big analogy. Um, you know, something that I, 
from my reading and studying of the Bible so far that that's you know something that they that had dealt with a lot. Yes. Yeah. And so that was one that was you know really easy for him to pull out yeah. to to use to depict. And then, you know, the second part of what we went over is basically him just, as he's mentioned this before, without the law, there is no sin. Yep. The law is knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. That's what the law means to us today. It's knowledge of sin. And even points it out, you know, if they didn't say you shall not covet, he would. I wouldn't know anything about covetousness. Mm -hmm. um, so, yep. you know, it's kind of, I just, now this is a thought that just came to you, but the first eight verses of chapter seven. Gosh, I don't know how many times I've said this going through Romans. Pretty much just summed up what we've learned in the first six chapters. Mm -hmm. We're dead to the law. Here's even a word picture so you can see it better. Mm -hmm. And once again, the law is just for knowledge of sin. That's what the first yeah. six... And as we've talked about in many videos, uh, you've got the gospel in there. Yes. So. It's great. So. Absolutely. This is probably a little shorter than most videos. Hey, we don't have a time hey. limit. Nope. We just, as we're moved, we roll. We're, so. we're covering the word. So be on the lookout for part two to come. After it'll come out, you know, after this one. So we thank you for being here. Thank you for enjoying, uh, spending this time with us and joining us on this journey. As it, Teddy mentioned before, you know, if you have questions, comments, leave them to us. Uh, maybe, you know, yeah. if there's something in there that we didn't cover that you got out of it. Let us know what the Holy Spirit spoke to you about. Mm -hmm. Help us learn. Help everybody else learn. So, um, yeah, I mean, just like it moved me to write my note while you were reading the scripture. Yeah. If you're watching this and the Holy Spirit hits you with something, drop it in the comments. Drop it. We'd, share, we'd, share we'd it love us. to read it and, and interact with you about it. Share That'd be it great. Us. So, um, you know, yeah. as usual, give us a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to it, share it. And, you know, if you know somebody Absolutely. who might get value out of it. So, that's. We're just here trying to be obedient to what we've been asked to do. As our reminder to ourselves, um, let our focus be that throughout this life, we live and die in a way that when we are thought of, it is Christ that is remembered. Amen. Christ be known. Right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for being present with us as we were going through your word today, Father. We thank you for opening our eyes to read your word and giving us the knowledge to understand your word, Father, and for giving us the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts yes, as we read Lord. your word, Father. Lord, we just pray that you would watch over us, watch over every eye watching this and every ear listening to it, Father, and that you would just continue to bless us all and continue to guide and protect us in our journey, Father, as we get to know you better. It's in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you guys next time.